Hello and welcome to Seven Wonders in about three minutes. It is a game for three to seven players. There is no official solo mode. Playing time is around 30 to 60 minutes. It is a relatively simple game. Across the ancient world, there are many great wonders under construction. The Pyramids, the Colossus, and of course, Halicarnassus B. The civilizations are interconnected and trade with each other, sharing knowledge and goods, as well as insults and war. You will build infrastructure, science, and the weapons of war. But most importantly, you will construct your wonder and use its unique abilities to become the greatest civilization of the ancient world. This game is won by the civilization with the most points at the end of the game. These come from a variety of sources, but are represented on cards by the laurels. Competitive. The players are all competing civilizations and only one can be the greatest. Card drafting. Each turn you will have a hand of cards, you will select one and pass the rest on to another player. Point salad. There are many different ways to score points in this game. Player turn. At the start of the game, you will be assigned a wonder. Each of them is unique and has its own advantages and power. Each wonder has an A and a B side, and the B sides are slightly more complex to use. The game is played in three ages, and each age uses a different deck of cards. Each player is dealt seven cards from the age deck, and at this point it is almost mandatory to complain that your hand of cards either has no good ones or that they are all good. You then select one card to play and hand the cards you did not pick to the next player along. As the age goes on, the hand of cards you receive will get progressive aggressively smaller. To play a card, you must pay the cost shown on the left hand side of the card. You gain the benefits shown at the top of the card. For example, this card costs one gold to play and gains you one stone or one wood resource. Resources like wood, clay and glass are permanent upgrades to your empire and are not expended when used. Some cards will have the name of another card on them. That means that in a later age, if you select that card, you may play it without paying its costs. If you are short of resources, you can pay gold to cover the shortfall, but only if the players to your left or right have that resource and they get the money you spend. You can also select the card and discard it for three coins. Wonders are built in stages, and each stage must be built in order. You must have the resources and place one card from your hand under the wonder to show it is built. At the end of each age, you get seven new cards, and the player you hand the cards to changes direction. The game ends at the end of the third age. Why would you like this game? Seven Wonders is a modern classic and one of the most owned modern board games, and for good reason. It's simple enough that most people can pick it up and play, while being deep enough that it feels rewarding when you win. The card drafting mechanic is great and causes a lot of agonizing and painful decisions. There is also a good amount of interaction with the players to your left and right as you wage wars with them, trade with them, and try to keep good cards away from them. The single best thing about this game is that it scales very well to the number of players. As almost all actions are simultaneous, a seven player game takes not much much longer than a three player one. However, it is quite hard to keep track of the scores during the game and sometimes you can be really surprised by who the winner turns out to be. And that can be off-putting to some players. Also, if you make poor decisions in age one, it can really leave you struggling for the whole game. If you like card drafting, but want a bigger and deeper game, I recommend playing Terraforming Mars with the optional card drafting rules. And if you like the ideas of Seven Wonders, but want a two-player game, I recommend Seven Wonders Duel.